Good afternoon, everyone. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Giselle Delmas. I'm the development executive. Um, channel development executive for PFU Canada, a Fujitsu company. And we will be co-hosting this with Polar Imaging. Steve Todd will be the other presenter for this afternoon session. Fujitsu, PFU Canada, has been in the scanner uh, technology market for over 30 years now. We are a market leader in the document scanner space in North America with over 50% of the market share. And we do have some award-winning um, products in our lineup. Number one being the Scans app, which has become the number one best-selling scan to PDF desktop solution in the market. We are Japanese engineered quality and reliability, which speaks to the robust nature of our product. Um, I often am asked how long do, do our scanners last in the field? And typically the answer is five to seven years, but quite honestly, due to the technology built into our scanners, it is not unusual for us to see scanners that are in the field running in perfect condition that are over 10 years old. So, there is a lot of reliability and a lot of um, quite advanced technology within our product and within our bundled solution called Paper Stream Capture and Paper Stream IP is the market, uh, the industry leading image clean cleanup technology. As well, I'm very, very proud to announce that our team, um, Fujitsu Canada, PFU Canada, as we are known now, has been the preferred scanner vendor as voted by our Canadian partners for 10 years running. And we are super proud of that accomplishment um, with, for our team. So next slide, please, Steve. So one of the questions that I thought I would just quickly um, go through is one that I'm often asked, and what is the difference between a dedicated scanner a multifunctional device, such as an MP, a photo, which does the photo copying and scanning all in one. And then there's the photo, the phone apps. <clears throat> I'm going to start with the phone apps um, just because they've come a long way with their technology. However, it is not quite efficient or effective if you are scanning multiple pages a day. So you don't want to be using a phone if you're scanning, you know, 20, 50, a hundred or a thousand pages in a day it just becomes very cumbersome. Um, as well, the technology may not all be there to do some of the extraction work that um, is required for some of the documents. However, the biggest difference and the, the, the main question that I'm often asked is the difference between having a dedicated document scanner and a photocopy. And it really comes down to these four um, points. And I work quite a bit with a lot of the uh, manufacturers of these, of these MFP devices and their reps will put in a dedicated scanner when there is difficult documents in the pro in the batch set. So, for example, if you're doing mixed batch scanning, so you're putting into that feeder sizes, different sizes and thicknesses of documents. Maybe you have plastic cards such as IDs, um, driver's license, health cards, et cetera, warranty cards. And then again, you have long, thin receipts, such as the ones that you might get at uh, your gas station or from the FedEx. From FedEx. Difficult documents are primary for a dedicated scanner. Our technology is built so that we can feed these in an effective and efficient way and reducing your downtime and reducing your um, quality control or having to fix these paper jams. Whereas with an MFP, you'll notice that it has to take several turns and you can often have an accordion-like document uh, returned to you if it hasn't been ripped or lost within um, the MFP. So difficult documents, mixed batch scanning, documents that are have maybe a lot of color, and require some image cleanup, which I'll briefly talk about in a second here as well. Intelligence, if you need to extract any important information, such as maybe a file a naming convention, and maybe you need to password protect the PDF, or maybe you're routing all of this information to a finance accounting package, um, you might need a dedicated scanner. The other factor, which is most common, is volume scanning. So if you are scanning um, 
It depends, maybe more than 500 pages a day, maybe more than 20 pages a day. It really depends on your organization. You would probably want to take that workload off of the shared device, freeing it up for those that need to do a big scan job or a big print job and having the scanner um, offload that workload into a dedicated scanner. Convenience and security are really the next um, debt indicators of whether you want a, a dedicated scanner or an MFP. So convenience for those that um, are doing quite a bit of scanning throughout the day do not want to be running back and forth within an office or within their home to that shared device. And for security purposes, if we are working with delicate confidential information, it is um, more secure to do it at one workstation and not leave a delicate document behind on a shared device um, that can be picked up or viewed by others. So those would be some of the main reasons you would choose a dedicated document scanner versus an all-in-one application. <clears throat> Steve, thank you. Our scanners come with a wide variety of technology including image cleanup technology that is done on the fly for you. So we are able to automatically do color detection. So that there is intelligence to understand if the document that you are scanning is in color or black and white, or we do grayscale. You can also set these parameters yourself if you would always like to do black and white, for example. Automatic size detection. So we scan just the size of that document. Um, so if it's a business card, you'll get just the business card scanned. Deskewing if the if the document the page goes in a little crooked, the software will automatically straighten it out. So you have a nice straight document going in. Automatic rotation is done based on text, so that if you do for by chance um, put in that document upside down. We can certainly rotate uh, based on the text to give you the proper image. Blank page deletion as well is available and that um, you can change that as well, but most people really do enjoy the blank page removal if you're scanning in duplex mode, which most of our scanners are duplex mode. We also have some very advanced document handling features, such as being able to do different thicknesses and sizes of um, of documents, including up to 220 inches in long page mode for uh, some of those longer receipts that you might have. Steve? Great. We'll, talk, we'll take a look at our FI series because this is really what we're going to focus on today. And I know that um, Polar Imaging also has some promotion on some very dedicated scanners specifically for this um, seminar. But I'll just quickly go through our product line so that you can take a look at uh, the wide variety of products that we do have available. So in our work group category at the moment, the most popular uh, scanners in this class um, are the 7140 and the 7160, specifically in AP finance applications. The 7160 is the favorite unit here being able to handle a multitude of different sizes and thicknesses of, of documents. If this one does 60 pages per minute, um, both sides pass through at the same time. Um, like I mentioned, the 7140 as well, very popular um, too. Same uh, footprint size, so they take up very little real estate space on your desk. Along with this, um, we also have our departmental. And the only difference between work group and departmental is really a couple of things. One is the volume and robust nature of, of the speeds and feeds of the departmental. You just go up a little bit more in terms of um, daily duty cycles. So if you're scanning, you know, over 9,000 pages a day, or you need a wide uh, automatic document feeder, then this is the category that we would put you in. FI7460, 7480 are still desktop models, don't take up a lot of real estate, but do give you the ability and flexibility to do 11 by 17 scan. On the next little uh, column over is our network and flexible distributed capture scanner. The FI73NX is a very, very unique scanner and it does give you a quite a bit of flexibility to 
to be able to scan either via USB, Wi-Fi, or Ethernet. And I know that Polar Imaging does have this very unique scanner as part of their promotion during for this seminar. Um, so I would encourage you to look at it. It is built on the same technology as our very popular FI7160. The other brand new scanner that we have here has also been made available as a promo unit for this seminar, and that's the FI800R. This scanner, again, is very unique and new. It is a um, very small footprint with two feeders. One is the automatic U-turn feeder where you can put a batch of documents into that and feed right away. The other one is if you see the slot right there at the very front of the scanner. This is for passport scanning. So that if you do have a requirement for passport scanning or embossed cards ID scanning, you can certainly put them through this feeder and it spits it right back out. It's a front load feeder. The production units are really used for um, high volume production scanning. These are typically used in uh, records management environments um, that we have available within. It's okay, we can move on. <laughs> Thank you. Within all of our FI series scanners, we have um, two bundled technologies. We, there's actually several, there's more than two, but the two that we highlight are PaperStream Capture um, and PaperStream IP. And today I'm just going to focus on PaperStream IP because this is an enhanced uh, Twain or ISIS driver that allows you to do image cleanup on the fly. And this is particularly important if you're working with some difficult documents that may have a lot of watermarks, a lot of color, maybe some light, faint text. Um, there could also be, you know, um, coffee stains, grease stains on them. And we have the ability to remove all that and give you a nice white background with some nice dark text. So as well as all of the um, image enhancements or um, benefits of the feeders that I mentioned earlier about auto color detection, blank page removal, and de-skewing, this technology also has the ability to drop out color, do some background smoothing, clean up edges, uh, remove uh, punch holes, um, character correction. So there's quite a bit of technology built into this driver and it is an enhanced driver that allows you to do this image cleanup technology. The, the next slide will actually show you some of the differences in the storage and of the image cleanup. So as you can see here, not only are we able to give you a nice white background with some nice dark text, and what this does is increase your confidence levels when doing OCR, but this will also allow you to do um, to decrease your storage file sizes. Okay, um, and OCR is optical character uh, optical character recognition, which allows you to extract information from the text of the document. So when you're doing that, you want nice white background text to increase those confidence levels and again reducing your file size that is just one of the um, technologies that is bundled with all of our fi series scanners that we feel would be of benefit um, in this type of application and with that said i'm going to hand it over to steve todd now to continue on with um, with the presentation take it away steve perfect thanks giselle can you hear me yep you're great excellent, excellent. So what I'm going to get into a little bit here uh, for our portion of the, the presentation is I'm going to first uh, let you know who we are as a company, but then get into some uh, AP automation solutions that, that, are, that are available. So very first uh, on the call today myself, I'm Steve Todd. I'm the Director of Business Development for Polar Imaging. I've uh, been with the company for just over 17 years, so I've uh, spent some time on a few document scanning, conversion, and uh, automation projects. We also have Kaylin Stevens, who is our uh, Director of Professional Services, Leanne Scott, who is our Marketing Coordinator, uh, as well as uh, Alexander Ion, who is uh, manning the chat. And uh, if you do uh, engage with us after the fact, he'll likely be your, your sort of point of contact. So our company, uh, Polar Imaging, we've been around since 2001. Uh, we're in London, Ontario, and we're a fully diversified document management services provider that offers a wide range of technology and services, which I'll, I'll, I'll touch on here in a moment. So our field of, of expertise is uh, first and foremost, document scanning. That's where we started. That's when we opened our doors. We started scanning documents for clients. 
and that's still a, a, a big portion of our, our business today. So we'll offer a turnkey solution to come pick up all your documents, bring them back to our uh, secure facility, uh, sort them, prep them, scan them, multiple levels of quality control, and uh, do some secure upload to you as well as uh, destroy those documents once uh, everything is satisfactory and, and signed off on. We also have document capture solutions. So we'll take our expertise that we have learned over the many, many years of scanning documents and we'll help implement your own on-premise, on-site document scanning solution with uh, Fujitsu scanners and uh, document capture software to help streamline your processes internally. We have enterprise content management. So we're, we're focused a little bit on paper scanning here, but we'll be able to manage any content that you have. So whether that be emails or PDF files, Excel files, Word documents or whatnot. We can manage all of that content um, in either a cloud or on-premise uh, solution. And then we also have uh, robotic process um, automation solutions. So if you have tasks that are repetitive, uh, tedious that, that you're doing manually today, uh, we can automate that with some RPA software. Our uh, mailroom services is, it really complements our accounts payable automation solutions, and we're, which has been gaining popularity, especially in these days where companies will redirect their mail to, to us or physical mail. So we will manage your mailroom for you, set you up with a secure PO box. On a daily basis, we will go to that PO box, we'll pick up your mail, we'll open it, scan it, and securely deliver it to, to you. We have professional services, so anything that we sell or support, we can. Uh, we have professional services wrapped around that. So if there's something that not you're not able to do out of the box, we have the technical team to make sure that we can make really anything happen. And then our Fujitsu sales and service. So we've been a, uh, as Giselle mentioned there, we've been a uh, partner with Fujitsu for over 15 years. So not only do we sell their uh, scanners, we also service them. And uh, furthermore, we're a user ourselves. So Fujitsu scanners are what powers our our service bureau. So we're running Fujitsu scanners uh, all day long. Now getting into sort of the, the core of uh, my presentation is the accounts payable automation. So here's some of the agenda topics that I'm gonna cover fair, fairly quickly here. Um, so I'm gonna talk about common reasons to consider AP automation. We're gonna look at a general uh, process flow for AP. We're gonna talk about capturing invoice data off of your invoices, routing invoices, two and three way matching. So for those of you who are not aware of those, what, the, what that means is we're going to capture and match off of an invoice and a purchase order for a two way. And we're going to match off of the invoice, the purchase order and a, and a shipping receipt for a, for a three way match. We'll get into a little bit about GL coding, talk about some integrations with your ERP or accounting systems, show you what it looked like to go back and search and retrieve some of these images after the fact, and then round that off with our webinar promo that we have for everyone who's registered today for this uh, webinar. So common reasons to consider um, AP automation that we see. So number one, we want to automate repetitive tasks and eliminate the paper processing. Two is we're gonna streamline uh, the routing and approvals. Three is we're gonna automate the purchase order matching. Four, and most important for a lot of organizations, is we're gonna eliminate data entry. So no more printing out invoices and keying that information back into your accounting system. And then we're going to centralize all of this for you. So we're going to give you a platform so that everything is in a central location and provide you with complete visibility over any invoice at any time um, and give you control to uh, lock down securities uh, and share that information. So let's kind of take a look here at a couple different paths that your invoices will generally follow. And first I want to say is that these solutions are not one size fits all. So it's not something that you're going to sign up with today and be good to go tomorrow. It is a true consulting engagement where, you know, our team will work with you to, to sit down and figure out what's happening in your AP department, where are invoices going, why are they going there, and then take what you have already done today and, and sort of automate that and put that into an electronic solution. So essentially we have two, two different paths here. Um, we have invoices that have a PO or invoices that don't have a PO. So invoices are going to come in. There's going to be data that is extracted from them. If it has a PO, it's going to go to the top path. It's going to check your ERP or accounting application and make sure that, that that PO is in there and that the invoice information matches. We're going to run our two and three way match. And then if there's any exceptions or validation that needs to happen, we'll throw that over to a user to verify, make any changes, and then we'll put the, the invoice into um, your ERP. So sort of the buzzword in the 
AP automation world is touchless processing. So in theory, an invoice comes in, matches the PO, is matched automatically, goes right into your ERP system to be paid. Oftentimes, what we find clients like to stop invoices at first to make sure they're comfortable with the process before having that true automation. So the second path is we'll go down the bottom here. So invoices that don't have a PO. So the same thing happens. You get data that's extracted. And then that will generally follow some sort of an, an approval workflow, and there'll likely be some GL coding that will happen along the way. So the invoice will come in, could go to a department, a department manager, group of people, and we'll route those, those documents accordingly. We always throw in our exception handling steps so we can uh, get eyes on uh, an invoice just in case. And then again, final destination, ERP that goes there. So how are invoices captured in the system today? Two ways. One, they're either coming in email. So if you have e an invoices that come in through AP department at yourcompany.com, uh, we will automatically grab those invoices, extract the data, and put them into the system. Or we are going to scan those invoices. So you're going to take your Fujitsu scanner. You're going to scan those invoices into the system um, and let them uh, route on it accordingly. So either way, regardless of how the information is coming in, if it's electronic or if it's paper, we're going to use the same methods to extract invoice data uh, and, and validate it and put it in, into the system. So what does that look like? So we use a piece of AI uh, technology from a partner of our Digitech systems, uh, patented um, AI engine that will go through, extract all of your the details off of your invoice, classify the, the documents, and then put them into, into the system. So we can literally take a bunch, we could take a thousand invoices from a thousand different vendors, throw them into a scanner, or import them into the system. The technology will go through automatically and it will classify the documents and it will start pulling off all the key pieces of, of, of information. So that covers off sort of the data extraction, the capture process. What I'm showing you here is this would be your customized workflow. So we would sit down with you, as I mentioned earlier, and determine what's going to happen with invoices once they come in. So we would take it from the basics of that invoice arrives, goes to this person, this department, and we'll kind of follow that along. We'll map it out visually in a diagram like so um, and create and start creating sort of the automation, create some of the, work, the workflow. So this one's somewhat basic where the invoice is going to come in. We're going to have someone code this invoice. It's going to go to a department manager, and then it's going to go to a, a general manager for a final check, and then it's going to get pushed off into the accounting system. In this case here, we use Sage 50. But I do want to mention we're fairly agnostic to the accounting applications that we can import into. It's basically a simple file exchange that we're doing. I don't want to get too technical on, on this webinar, but i um, happy to discuss offline with anybody. Uh, there's a few other boxes in here that you can see, such as validation that we're able to do. So we can do things in the background, like what are we, what are we val validating? We're, we, perhaps we're validating amounts on the invoice. So we've captured the subtotal, we've captured the tax, and we've captured the total amount on the invoice and potentially line items as well. We want to make sure that all that math adds up and, and that we've, we've captured everything correctly. Uh, when invoices are coded, we want to make sure that you know, the proper GL accounts have been uh, distributed accordingly based off the value of that invoice. Or maybe we've captured a date format that's a day, month, year, and your accounting system wants to see month, day, year. So we're doing some validation and, and changing some things around in the back end. So Here's sort of your, your day in the life of your you know, AP person. So essentially what's going to happen is you're going to receive an email. It's going to say you have an invoice waiting for you in your workflow queue. You can click on the document or you just simply click on the link, which will jump you into the cloud-based application. So you click the link, it'll take you into your work step. And within the work step, you have a series of tasks that's, that's been set out for you. If you recall in the screenshot before, this is our coding stage. So we have a, someone in the AP team that's responsible for coding this invoice. They're going to take ownership of the document, and then they're going to, to be able to take a look at the document um, and do anything that they need to do with it. So I just want to back up quickly here. One question that I get as well is, do we have to go back to our email or to inbox every time and click on this link to, to access these invoices? And the answer is no. So if you look here, we have a queue of invoices that are all queued up, ready for you to take a look at. Uh, you'd simply just take ownership of them, do what you need to do with an invoice, and then just cycle through that queue until you have nothing left uh, in, in your workflow queue. So the invoice would then be coded. We are going to open up a coding screen here. 
Um, in this case, we have uh, different GL accounts um, and types and accounts. This is just information that's pulled directly from your ERP or accounting application. And in this case, we're assigning the different line items from the invoice to the proper GL accounts. So taking a look back at the workflow here, we went from the uh, GL coding invoice over to the department manager approved. So the department manager, same thing, they're gonna get an, an email to take a look at the document for the review. In this case, they take ownership of it. They say, yep, this looks great. I'm gonna click validate. They click the validate button here up in the top left. Send this invoice off to the, the general manager. We'll have their own set of tasks to do with the document. So these workflows can be extremely elaborate or, or, or simple. Uh, depending really on whatever your, your process is. And that's what we like to get to the, to the bottom of. So the general manager would pop open the document. In their case, they have the ability to, to change some of the, the uh, GL coding. They can validate this invoice as well. And then we're going to put an e-signature on there um, to, to sign off on that, on that document. So integration, I, I mentioned there, uh, fairly agnostic, uh, as I said, to uh, any really accounting system. Uh, I'm not going to get too much into this, but basically we can work with you and your team regardless of the accounting system that, that you're using today. Uh, I believe there's some bookkeepers on, on the call as well. We, we have clients that we will literally just take their paper or, or electronic uh, PDFs, extract the data, and then give them back a CSV file so you're not having to, to key that information. And so it doesn't have to even go through a huge elaborate workflow. We can just extract the, the information, give it back to you as in usable data. So search and retrieval of, uh, of the invoices here. So at any time now I mentioned everything's centralized, we're going to jump into the cloud-based application, um, which is called Image Silo. You're gonna have your own unique entity ID, your username and password to come into the system. This here is all cloud-based anywhere I am in the world. I can access this, um, log into the system. I'm going to see uh, documents that, that I have uh, permission to see. So in this case, I have a project up here in the top left It's called Accounts Payable. That's the only project this user is able to see. Uh, with an organization, you may have uh, human resource contracts, um, Accounts receivable in here as well, but this user is just my AP user, so they're going to click on the accounts payable project. When I open up the project, I have a, a series of index values that I can search on. So all of that stuff that I extracted through the AI technology process, I can now search on. So if I wanted to search for a vendor, if I wanted to search for a range of dates, I could do so in here, dollar amounts. This is a pretty basic system. Uh, so I'm going to search for my Starship vendor, run a search. And I will find that invoice that I had, simply double click on it, and it will open up the, the image of, of that invoice. So from here, I can you know, scale in on this image, get a better look at it. Um, I can do a few different things up at the top if I wanted to print the document, which we highly suggest you don't. Uh, we can email, we can save this as a different out of the, out of the system. We can add a new document if I had a, an, a PDF or some supporting documents that came in, or I could scan a new document as supporting documents into this, uh, this invoice. Steve, unfortunately, I don't think that that image loaded up properly. I just wanted to let you know. Oh, I didn't? No, I didn't load up for me properly, but I think we're okay to, to continue on. All right, sorry about that. I'm not sure why that, uh, that didn't pop up properly. Sorry, are you seeing that screen now? Yep, perfect. Okay. Thank you. So if that didn't load up properly for you and you couldn't see what I was doing, just very quickly here, I'm running into my system. I'm clicking on the accounts payable projects. I want to search for a vendor uh, starship. I could get very granular and look at specific dates. I'm going to run a search. It's going to show me that line item. I'm going to pop open the, uh, the line item and it's going to retrieve that document. So now any invoice, regardless of how it came into your organization, is all accessible in a central uh, spot. No more searching through shared drives or going through filing cabinets to find anything. So tons of different things we can do in here, like set retentions after seven years. I don't want to get into too much of that today. I would love to engage with anybody um, offline and discuss further about the system, but really I wanted to give you a sort of a general overview of some of, some of the capabilities here. Uh, fully audited, so there's an audit trail in the background. We can see what's going on, who's, who, who did what, when they did it. 
Uh, we have a lot of clients that do paperless audits, so they will they will lock down specific documents and give their auditors access so that they can uh, do the audit without having to come into the office and, and ruffle through paper or different documents. And again, that's all audited as well. So hopefully that came through all right. I'm sorry for the technical glitch there. Giselle, thanks for letting me know. But uh, I'm going to start to sort of wrap this up with our, our webinar um, promotion. And so what we're offering today is exclusive to anyone who's registered for this event. We have instant rebates on four Fujitsu scanners, the FI 800R, the 7140, the 7160, and the 7300NX, which is the cool little network touchscreen scanner. Uh, if you're not sure what scanner really is best for you, we don't expect you to. That's why we want you to, to chat with us, and we'll kind of understand your volumes, what you're, what you're doing, what your workflow looks like, how many people you have scanning, and help recommend you know, a scanner that, that works best. It um, used to be that you'd have one huge central scanner that scanned all of your stuff for your organization, but especially now more than ever, uh, distributed scanning is the way to go. So, you, so companies end up having you know, a bunch of these smaller scanners that feed the system. Uh, we are also offering a free trial on our cloud-based AP automation solution that I just showed there, which is Image Silo. And we're going to include a basic AP workflow configuration with that. So we're going to allow you to pump your own information into the system and see how you can um, transition documents from uh, one person to another. And we're going to include with that 50 invoices process for free. So you send 50 invoices to the system. We'll show you how this technology works and is, and is routed. And, uh, and finally, uh, with this promo to kind of to wrap it all up is a two week trial with a Fujitsu scanner of your choice. So any of the scanners that you saw at the beginning of the slide or the presentation, I think I put them here as well. Any of these scanners, if they're of interest to you, we can get you an evaluation scanner for two weeks so you can fully try out all of this. Um, make sure and see how, see how it works uh, for, for your organization or company. So with that, I, that wraps everything up. I want to thank everybody. I want to thank Fujitsu for allowing us to uh, you know, co-host this. this is, we've had a great partnership with them for many, many years. Uh, I want to thank every one of you for joining us today. Hopefully you've learned something. Uh, and if there, are, we're going to open up to questions here in a moment if there are any. But uh, I encourage you to contact me directly uh, for you know, a free consultation one-on-one. -on -one. This is really customized to your environment. It's really trying to you know, not reinvent the wheel so much, but understand what, what you're doing from a process perspective and, and automate that with some really great tools. That's great, Steve. Thank you. I have unmuted the lines so that if there are any anybody any participants that would like to ask a question, please feel free to do so um, or use the chat. And if there are no questions, um, that's great. And if you have some later on, please feel free to contact Steve at the email address you see there on your screen. And and we did record this this session, so everyone that registered will will make this available for you. Uh, anyone that couldn't attend today, and Alex, was there anything that I may have missed there before we just wrap this up and uh, give everyone the rest of their day back here? No, I think you covered it all pretty much. Um, the one thing I just want to mention again is that our consultations are free, so if you have any questions, by all means, do not hesitate to contact us. We'd be more than happy to talk to you. Right. Well, fantastic. Thank you, everybody, for your time. Um, we all appreciate you being here with us this afternoon and have a wonderful rest of your Wednesday. Take care. Thank you.